everybody, Noreen Smith from OrganizedAndCreativeMom.com here, and I'm so excited to be back to do another episode of Technique Tasters for Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. Uh, today I've got a bunch of new products from Creative Memories, including the Citrus Summer Collection, which features beautiful papers, stickers, and variety mat cards. And I've got the Lace Trim Decorative Border Punch, which is a great tool. And I really want to show you five fun ways that you can use it. I'm all about giving people ideas on how to stretch their, their scrapbooking or their crafting dollar. And I want to show you how you can use it not just to make a lace trim border, but some other fun and cool looks as well. So let's get started. Now with the Lace Trim Decorative Border Punch, you can see that I've been able to create some really pretty um, ideas here. And although I've got a little sample board here, you can use any of these ideas on a scrapbook layout, a card, a paper crafting project, or even a fun little bag and tag idea that I'll show you in a second. So obviously it's a border punch, so you're going to be able to create these fun borders. And here I've just uh, created two borders. and mounted them behind one of the variety mat cards. And it acts like a little frame, so that would be a great thing to do behind a photo or layer it behind another piece of decorative paper to create a really richly textured look. This one is really just uh, layers of the little uh, border and it kind of creates pretty little ruffle. So I'm going to show you how to make that. Then I've got a doily here and it's not a perfect doily. It's not a manufactured doily. It looks much more handmade. So I'm going to show you how to make that. Some different kinds of tags and then we're going to finish off by talking about how to uh, add some stitching with this particular border punch. Real stitching and faux stitching. Let me first show you how to use the punch. There's a locking mechanism on the back side that you, you just slide back and forth, close to store, open to punch. And then you'll also see when you take it out of the box that there are two little lines printed on the base plate where your paper goes. And those are the lines that help you um, align your paper so that you can start to punch. I like to just take my black pen and just copy those lines up onto the front face of the punch so that I can see it a little better. And you'll also notice that I've got a line right here in the center and that's going to be key when we make our doilies. To use the punch just put it on a flat surface and then you can feed your paper in. This is red cardstock from Creative Memories. You can feed it in from the right hand side going left or left hand side going right. Whichever way you prefer. You're going to line up the edge with the far, the line that's on the, uh, the farthest side of the plate. Hold it at the back with your thumb or forefinger and then just go ahead and punch. Then we move it along and you can see that the punched paper now comes out the side and to continue punching you're just going to line up the design that it's made with the design that's printed onto the plate. And then you'll have lots of confetti and a great border design. So of course you could do that on the edge of a page, you could do it on the edge of a card, or of course you could trim this off and use it as a border. Okay, so again that's how I got these particular borders here. Now this ruffled border was kind of fun because what I did is I took the patterned paper that I punched and cut into a border and then I just used my emery board to kind of distress the edges a little bit and expose a little bit of that kind of uh, you know white core of the paper and I just kind of pinched and crimped the edges so that I could create that sort of ruffle effect. Just trim it to however long you like. Again, this would be beautiful under a photo, especially a, a vintage or heirloom sort of photo, or uh, on the side of a card. So that's how to create that sort of ruffled look. Now to create these little tags uh, and also this little bag, uh, it's really easy to add a decorative flair to any kind of packaging. I always find that I'm running out at the last minute to, to find packaging for a gift. So I like to use these little paper bags. You can get them in all kinds of colors. Green, of course. I've got a pink one here, a small 
kind of craft paper and uh, you could even use a, a lunch bag. So again, you're just gonna punch along the top edge of the bag. And then you can see that when you fold it over, you're gonna have a really pretty decorative edge for your gift package. Now to create those little tags, all I've done is I've punched a piece of the decorative paper, okay, and left quite a bit, about, I think it was about three inches before I trimmed it off. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut between each of these sort of little scallops. And you could do it with scissors if it's a short piece, or of course you could use your trimmer, okay? I'm just gonna trim between these two little circles here. Just eyeball it up. And that gives me a fun little tag that I can hole punch and add to a bag like this. Or I could also just add a few together and put it on a layout. And if I go ahead and punch both sides of a piece of paper, when I trim it up, I'm gonna get a double-sided tag. Sorry, this one isn't quite as pretty as this one is, but you get the idea that if you punch along two sides of the paper and then trim horizontally, then you're gonna get a nice little tag. This would be perfect as a little journal box or even as a base for your embellishment clusters. Now, let's talk about creating this doily, and I think this is such a fun look. I love using doilies, and I used to go and buy the paper doilies from the dollar store, but here you can create your own doily from whatever paper you want. So first of all, what I did is I cut a, this one is five inches, a five inch circle using the Creative Memories custom cutting system. It comes with a variety of templates and patterns, and then you choose the blade that you want to use based on the size that you want to get. So if you don't have the custom cutting system, definitely take a look at it. It's a great way to make a lot of different sizes of shape. Then I use the new 13 inch cutting mat, and I basically just put my circle right in the center, right in the center there. And then I used a ruler and pencil to draw eight equal lines, uh, up and down, side to side, and then 45 degrees through my circle. And these lines are gonna be important because we're gonna use those lines to line up our circle with the decorative lace uh, border punch to create our doily. So we're just gonna put one of our, line up one of our lines with that center line on the punch that we, that we created. Punch, and then you can see how that's gonna work. And then we're just gonna keep rotating it, inserting the punch, lining up the lines, and going all the way around. So you can see that this is a great little doily now. Um, you can see my pencil lines, of course, but you can, of course, just turn it over uh, and then you've got another, um, you know, a different look and you don't have to worry about the pencil lines or, of course, just take an eraser and erase those. And that's how I got this particular little doily. So that is such a fun way to create your own custom sized and custom pattern doily. And then the last thing I want to share with you is how I used the uh, holes that you get when you punch the, the uh, with the lace trim border punch. How I used the holes basically as kind of pre pre cut holes for some stitching. Now I don't do a lot of stitching on my layouts and cards. I love the look of it, but it does take a little bit of time. So the nice thing about this is that everything's already punched for you. You can just pull your embroidery floss or you could use silver cording, uh, a fine ribbon, baker's twine, hemp twine, anything like that. And just pull it through, use a big darning needle 
and you can just go to town creating a variety of different stitches. You can see when you don't have to measure and when you don't have to punch the holes, it goes really, really fast. So if you love the look of stitching on your layouts, give this a try. And you may actually have some other punches that create kind of a little tiny row of holes as well that you could try it with. So I've just done a running stitch all the way along all the way along here. And then I've had fun trying out a couple of different um, other decorative stitches, kind of a, an edging stitch here. I kind of just followed the, it almost looks like a little tree in the center there. And then just almost like a little fan shape. So those were really fun. Now, if you're not interested in actually stitching, let's get a piece of scrap paper here. You can also use those lines or those little holes as a bit of a guideline and use your markers to create some faux stitching. So I've got my dual tip marker here. I'm gonna use the bold tip. And then the key when you're doing faux stitching is to kind of curve your lines. Don't do a straight line back and forth. Curve your lines between the two holes and then that kind of ends up looking like the, the thread because of course the thread goes up and over. So that creates a bit of a dimensional look. So whether you choose to use real thread or faux stitching, that's a really, really fun way to get that look. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how you could use a, a single border punch to create a variety of different looks on your layouts, your cards, your other paper crafting projects. And again, even to kind of use it for your packaging and gift giving needs. Don't forget to pick up the latest copy of Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. This is the summer 2019 issue and it is chock full of great ideas to make cards and layouts and use mixed media and journaling and all kinds of super fun things. So make sure you give that a try as well and hopefully you've got some new ideas to try this summer. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thanks Creative Scrapbooker Magazine for having me and we'll see you on another Technique Tasters soon. Bye-bye for now.